Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. This time we're going to go aboard a brand new boat. So new, I think it's the newest boat, other than my own, I've ever been on. It's nice to see it all glistening and smooth and squeaky clean. It won't last long. It's a fishing boat. All fishing boats get fishy, slime and muck and yucky stuff on them. But listen, this is a bit different. This one's big, it's fast, it's beautiful. It's owned by Tomo, it's down in Watchit Marina. Let's get down there and let Tomo run us through it get some tips on an amazing fishing machine. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Windswept, windswept, and uh, yeah, it's still we, dry at the moment. Yeah, we've got a bit of a blustery day today, has it? We, we cancelled our trip today, and uh, I'm not surprised, not surprised, yeah. but uh, I mean, it's a big old boat, and it's bigger than the last one we went on with you. Oh, yeah, much, much different. Uh, yeah, my last boat, my um, my Pirate 21, the yeah. um, you know, the 21 foot, uh, fantastic boat, loved it, but uh, yeah, this is something uh, completely different altogether. Um, yeah. This uh, 11.4 metre swift cat. We've got a full walk around deck. Sure, um, yeah, yeah. You know, we 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 fish 12 anglers, a piece of cake on here. Um, we have days with 12 anglers, two rods each. We've got 24 rods out, and uh, that's my sort they, of talk. That's yeah, my sort of talk. Um, 24 rods. Yeah. I need 23 of those myself. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to handhold this because I want to show you around the inside here while the weather's bad outside, and then we'll go outside and show you all the other goodies on the boat. Yeah, so I'll just take you around the, the boat. As I said, this is an 11.4 meter Swift Cat. Um, uh, this boat, and actually if we have a little peer out the window as well, uh, the boat next to us, real deal. Great sharking boat, fishes out of uh, Ilfracombe in the summer. Um, for you guys, definitely look him up, he's fantastic. Uh, but that boat was the previous one out of the Malt. So uh, myself and the skipper, Dan, we are, we're great mates. I had a, uh, something to go on, have a little bit of a comparison. But then there's just subtle changes. So for both of us, uh, the hulls are exactly the same, as I say, 11.4 meters, um, catamarans. They've both got hydrofoils fitted to them. We've got a great big wing uh, sort of across the center of the tunnel about where I'm standing. And then we've got two smaller wings on the inside back quarters. And what that does is, as we sort of um, push on towards, well, for me on this boat, uh, 20 knots, you get a sudden lift um, and there's a lot less drag. I can then back the throttle back. Uh, we're at our cruising speed of 27 to 30 knots, which is rapid for a charter boat. But I can keep backing the throttle back, and my fuel economy becomes so so much better. Is that uh, is that a, a difference to what I was on a small boat a film recently? The guys probably saw it on there. The guy called it a wave splitter. But this what you're talking about is different. It's not just a wave splitter between the holes it will lift the whole boat this will lift the whole boat and this yeah. is what eight tons you were saying I think? yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite an unusual experience um, like very often when you're driving the, the motorboat you get up on uh, to the plane and then you tend to just sort of lower the, the bow and you, 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 you sort of cruise along at a very um, almost sort of very flat with the boat whereas what we tend to do is keep the bow up a little bit and we're really driving the boat on the central hydrofoil here so when you're uh, sitting in the helm seat or uh, you're standing at the front of the boat here actually underneath you in the right conditions the boat is not in the water um, so it's quite an unusual experience um, but yeah it's fantastic and I say for us that allows us to be fast um, and we can be fast because our fuel economy is then greatly reduced by having these hydrofoils uh, so for everybody fishing on board, it just means more time fishing. What about uh, your engines on the back, Tom? Motor? Yeah, we've got is there a difference between the two, between these two holes? You know, uh, the, the engines that you've got. And yeah, parts? I mean, on both both these boats, we've got some awesome engines. On my boat here, um, I've got some Mercury Verado Sea Pros. They're uh, 
uh, 4.6 litre V8, 300 horsepower uh, outboards and twin outboards. We've got two of them. So, um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. I love having one on the back. Um, on Dan's boat over on Real Deal, he's got Suzuki's. Uh, they're a little bit different. They're V6s, uh, 325 horsepower, so up on the horsepower a little bit. Um, and then cylinder wise, um, sorry. Um, Literage wise, uh, I can't quite remember, that's a little bit down. So they're different engines. Um, I've got single 15 inch props on mine. Uh, Dan has dual props. So the engines are very, very different. Um, but as I said, the, the hulls are fantastic on the boat. And actually, performance wise, it's very, very similar. Our cruising speeds are extremely similar, as is fuel economy and things like that. Basically, they're fast boats and we get you guys uh, fishing lots. All right, so in terms of um, building this boat, uh, when we approach Swift Cat, the, essentially pick the hull length, so 11.4 meters, that's standard. And then everything that we're standing on is really what do you want. Um, and actually that took me a couple of weeks to kind of get my head around. For the first couple of weeks, I didn't really give them much instruction. Um, I spent a lot of time in my yard at home with a, a can of marker, um, took one of my kitchen chairs out, and I just sat amongst lines and measurements and dots and tried to picture it in my head. Because um, really what we're looking for on a, a charter boat, we want as much angling space as we possibly can, uh, we want shelter, uh, how much cabin space do you want, what are you going to do with your deck furniture, um, so there's a lot to consider. Um, so what I came up with uh, in the end was for me to, I just took my engine surrounds back a little bit further, um, that allowed me to have a pretty large cabin. Um, and the reason I decided to do that it was twofold really. Um, at one point my choice was to perhaps have uh, a bulkhead almost directly where behind the, behind the helm seat here and then to have an open space for people to come into in the foul weather. I was not sure and it was a very last minute decision to go, do you know what, we're going to have a proper cabin with a lot more space in here, as I say, for two reasons. One, I've got children. So actually from a selfish point of view, if we're going to have the family on board, that's better for them. But actually, I've then got the opportunity to have a heated cabin and when we do get foul weather, anybody wants, come on in, um, get warm, put your bags in here, keep your bags dry, keep your coats dry, keep things like that. Um, and that's what I went for. And, and it's, it's received in different ways. You get groups of anglers who just don't come in the cabin. It's, it's not in their interest. They want to be outside. They love the outdoors and, and whatever, and that's them. Um, but then you do get groups that, that love to be in here. And at least it gives people the options. Um, it gives me a lot more uh, or storage space as well. It gives me a nice galley area also. So I saw this, I saw that. Talk us through that. You got to double yeah, gas burners. Yeah, so it's all pretty simple, you know. But it, at least it gives us the opportunity to have uh, hot tea and coffee. We've got an oven there, so I mean it's January at the moment. It's great to go out there and have the opportunity just to heat up a few pies, pasties, whatever it might be. Um, and then uh, yeah, this side we've got our sink, uh, our water underneath. Um, and there is extra storage. So that's, that's a water yeah, pump storage under there. Just flick it open. We've got our fresh oh, water, see, water and, and um, you you know, our grey water, our waste water there as well. It's just a simple 12 volt system. So that's a, that's a, that's a pump there. Yeah, I guess yeah. Yeah. So anybody who is into their um, you know sort of campers and caravans will probably recognise that as just being a you know say a very very simple um, 12 volt pump. Sure. Um, and then uh, yeah, turn of the tap and out, out comes your water to fill our kettle or you know a bit of washing up or whatever it might be. Um, again, in, in the cabin then here, my options really were, was I just going to go for a single helm uh, seat? Was I going to stick in a second seat? Uh, was I going to have some sort of fold out table? Uh, when you start um, sort of doing stuff that is not off the shelf, uh, you end up with it's, it's almost just a minefield with the amount of options, because you can do anything. Um, but what I went for was just the helm seat here for, for, for myself, and then just giving consideration to the fact that I'm going to make a nice space that people can come into. So um, our trip last night, it rained. It rained so much, Graham. And on our way home, we had 10 anglers on board. We had nine of them in here. <laughs> and uh, one hardy soul or foolish soul, whichever way you want to look at it, he kept himself outside. But, you know, each their own. Um, but yeah, do, no, so do they fight over your luxury sprung 
Pat in check, isn't well, it? That is very what? nice to me. Yeah, um, I did. I did spot someone having a little bit of a rest, and actually, do you know what? Actually, I think he was doing. He was in his seat here. Yeah. It was raining, and I think he was watching his rods through the window. Oh, that sounds um, good to so, me. Uh, yeah, that was some pretty luxury. Yeah, you've got to have that as a skip from you, really. You've got to. You, ah, got, yeah, you need you something got, for yourself. You've got to look after yourself, haven't you, Graham? I mean, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, I'm spending hours and hours and hours yeah. out here. Um, so uh, yeah, you need to be comfortable. Um, yeah. And storage down below that as well, or is oh, that ton, like... tons of storage? Yeah, we've got storage under under the helm seat. Um, uh, a lot of stuff I end up putting behind the helm unit here. It's just I've got my own rods behind the helm unit. I just grab them and bring them out. Should I go on a day's fishing myself? And I see Simrad there. Yeah, the Simrad stuff is fantastic, um, and, and I'm sure you know all the other brands are great as well. Uh, there is so so much that you can do with the you know the latest sort of Simrad gear. There's, there's there's more stuff you can do it than I'm ever going to do with it. Um, what I like about it is essentially if you can use a smartphone, you can use any of this Simrad gear. I, I didn't actually read any of the instructions probably for a month or so. Um, it was very easy just to tap away and play and be able to use it. Sufficient um, for catching fish. That's what you want. A lot of stuff you probably. Like a it lot of is. us guys with boats, and I've got one. Yeah. Ninety percent of it you don't need to use. You want sounders, plotters, tracking, all that. You know, you That's want it. information. Yeah. It, you know, and that gets you there. It it is. It's just the simple stuff. Up, up you know, it, it, updated. That's what. That's all it is. Um, you know, the sky's the limit with what you do. But really, I've, like I say, I've got my my chart, so I know where I'm going. I've got my marks. Um, I've got my sonar, my fish finder, so I can see the depths and uh, things like that. Um, and then just other niceties that you have amongst it. You, you know, you've got great stereo system, great radio. Um, oh my goodness me! The, the, you, you can pick up tide data on here. You can pick up weather. Um, it's got its own sort of uh, 4G wireless network as well. Oh, what, what about great. anchoring? Do you have a do you have a, a system for getting it up other than the ordinary ring? Do you still use the ordinary? Oh uh, yeah. Well, or, <laughs> so do you have my, a winch or what? Yeah, on my um, Pirate 21 that I used to have that you saw previously, I did that using the um, the ordinary ring and buoying yeah. the the anchor up. On here, I've got a nice switch that I press and oh. it winds the anchor up itself, uh, which is great. Yeah. So that runs off a again a 12 volt system. Um, out in the Bristol Channel here again, we do use pretty heavy anchors. Uh, it's 11.4 meter boat. I've got a 25 kilo delta anchor wow. on the front. Um, that's heavy. That is hard. That is way, heavy. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could still use a an oldenly system. And actually, you know, we carry. I, I do carry that as a backup, just in just case. in case you get just, stuck or just something. Just the eventuality that yeah. that um, you know the windlass failed. Um, you know, something doesn't work. Um, you know, I keep the old system on board. It's very, very simple to use. I had a good length of chain with that as well, I imagine, right? the boat yeah, this size? Yes, yeah, it is. Um, off the top of my head, I can't quite remember what I put on, but essentially it's double the length of the boat. So I think we're talking like 20 odd metres of, of chain. Um, so now distance-wise for guys, you, you, we all, they've seen our films before on the Watch It Marina area. Yeah. This fishing is really, really good, close to shore. Yeah. It sounds ridiculous, but it's really good, isn't it? But yeah, you can so. run a long way. What sort of distance can you do, given the summer months, spring, autumn, with good weather? Where would you be running to? What could, what could you, what you get to? Wrecks, sharking? What could you? Yeah, do? I mean, we we don't do much wrecking. Um, there are wrecks out in the, uh, you know, once we get out sort of into North Devon and, and and head on further out there, there are wrecks that we can visit. But we end up going over a lot of fish for it. Uh, and actually, do you know what? If you're going to do some wrecking, uh, maybe the south coast is the place to go. It, it, it's your classic wrecking spots. Up here, there's say tons of fish in shore. But our range, we can uh, we can nip out and visit Lundy Island, which is a very, very special trip. Out at Lundy Island, there's a lot of uh, species fishing where actually you're going to drop down baited feathers, things like that, and you just don't know what's going to come up. Good um, pollock fishing around there, I think. Great there? pollock fishing yeah. as well, yeah. Um, taupe. Uh, the other side of Lundy as well, we've got um, some sharking as well, blue yeah. sharks, things like that. So, you know, our options are, um, you know, I mean, Gosh, there's only so many fish you can go for in one day. We've got more options. Than and you can also go up channel as well, can't you? You can go up. You don't always have to go west. You can run up east as well, I guess. Yeah, and across, across to the Welsh coast as well. Uh, that's the great thing about the boat being fast. Um, it's 12 and a half miles straight across to the Welsh side here. Sure. Um, and that would offer us shelter on a northerly wind. So we can get across there in 25 minutes. Um, so, you know, if we come down here on a day and it's a pretty stiff northerly blowing, it's choppy this side. 
never mind, out of the harbour gates, you know, we'll just punch through the through the waves for you know a few miles and then it just flattens off and flattens off as you get nearer their shoreline and you can fish on a perfectly flat day on the Welsh coast. Now I remember, uh, I remember years ago we used to come down here. <clears throat> A big mistake I think anglers might make is we all sit looking at the weather. If we if, if we don't, we should. We should be looking at the weather. So you look at the weather and you think, like today is 100% blowing off. But a lot of those are borderline cases, I find. And the thing they don't realise is there's a, like, a kink in the land here, isn't there? Some, from are, mine head up, yeah, we, you can fish in southwesterlies that are totally are blown off on the so south coast. We're so lucky here. Um, once you get to about Minehead, you don't really get any of the Atlantic swell coming up. So then you're just dealing with whatever the wind's going to kick up. Now yesterday, classic case, it blew 50, 60 mile an hour southwesterlies yesterday. The sea was flat. Really? Yeah. So we went out there, we fished, big tides that helped to keep the boat. I mean, the boat sat beautifully. Um, yeah, sure out on deck. It is windy yeah. and it did rain a little it's bit. It's not swinging though. You, you walk around a piece of cake, you're not yeah. rocking and rolling. The sea was flat and that's a really yeah. lucky thing for us up here um, the only direction that gives us uh, a real bit of trouble is a northwesterly yeah um, you know from us here watch it looking out and uh, you know towards a sort of a northwesterly wind the next bit of land you bump into is probably Ireland there's, there's quite a lot of sea in between us and there and yeah you know as with anywhere um, you know if it is windy in that direction it will it will kick up the seas but that's it um, northerlies northeasterlies easterlies now did I see on your North website what's your website what was that website called? was it Her so it's heritage charters yeah. heritage charters.co.uk but you do you do uh, thinking of beginners you also do higher tackle is it you yeah yeah so on our um, I mean in all our trips all the Rods, reels, all the tackle you need, that is all included in the price. Um, so if you if you don't own any gear, it doesn't matter, turn up, just use ours. Oh, ideal for beginners, because A is a big boat ideal. and they've got tackle and bait yeah. as well. Yeah, and absolutely ideal. Um, and I do know that people who come from elsewhere as well, who've never fished the Bristol Channel, never fished in the tides that we get, are a little bit uncertain about what rods to use. Um, so if you're an experienced angler, turn up, use ours, simple. And what have you got, like multipliers, fixed ball? What, run us through the tackle briefly. So the, at the moment... The rental stuff, you know, the highest. Yeah, stuff. I've got two sets of uh, rods on the boat. Um, I've got some 8 foot 8 uh, Dave Byron DB1s, which are a real do-it-all type rod. And I, I use them myself. Uh, you can use them down tiding, but you can also cast a, a 12 ounce lead and a bit of bait with it as well. So use them for up tiding. Yeah. Uh, you really can belt them out. They're a nice rod to use. Um, then I've got some more traditional uh, six foot, 15 to 30 pound down tied rods as well. Um, so we use those. What line would you have on those sort of setups? For the higher um, gear that we've got, I actually use a 40 pound main line. Um, but 40 pound on our higher rods and reels. On my own personal stuff, I use 30 pound mono. But that just means that sometimes when you're fighting a big fish in strong tide, you've got to be sometimes a bit more delicate with the sure. drag. Whereas if I just go up to a 40 pound mono with the guys and girls on here, um, especially if they've not really experienced that pull and big fish before, yeah. it doesn't matter. We can almost fish locked up and it's a case of, right, just hang, hang on. on. And, yeah. You know, we, we will win eventually. Um, so that's why I do that. But mono instead of braid, um, in, what I see is uh, two, twofold really. One, if you are going to be fully attentive on your rod and you're going to keep it in your hand all the time, braid is brilliant. Um, so, for example, if you are doing some down tiding, and if actually think about other places in the you know uh, around the UK where you might be doing some deeper down tiding, then braid cuts through the the tide, the water. You yeah. can use less weight and lead. But for us, it's shallow. We tend to then be dropping the leads onto the bottom, and then one of the issues you have is if the boat just swings a little bit in the yeah. wind, you do sometimes just get lines touching. Now, <laughs> touching. <laughs> I'm laughing. I know what braid. I know what braid. Braid to untangle. Braid touching anything else, you yeah. just end up in the most almighty tangle. Yeah. it's a pair of scissors or a knife. Uh, yeah, Whereas mono is so so forgiving. Yeah. But the other reason is that with braid up here in our shallow water, you lose more. Fish. Is that right? Yeah. Really? What I see happen quite a lot is we'll have rods, you know, in the rod holders or, or whatever it might be, over the side, and then something big comes along, takes that bait, the rod's banging away, and then ping, it's yes. off. Yeah. The same scenario with mono, 
that rod's still hooping over and there's a bit of a panic to rush to it and grab it. Uh, the guys pick the rods up and they've still got the fish on. Yeah. And I'm sure it's just because the stretch. Braid, the stretch. Yeah. yeah. The braid's yeah. got no stretch in it, so yeah. it just yanks the hook out. Yeah. Whereas the mono, that stretch just gives you that chance, and yeah. it definitely does. We have more hookups with the mono. Um, gives you that chance to to you know to get your rod. Get control of that fish, maybe, and uh, you know, and hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully. Have, hopefully, fingers crossed, yeah. and uh, and get it in. But yeah, the definitely, definitely mono over braid up here in the Bristol Channel. Yeah. So in terms of the gear and gizmos that I've got on the boat, I want to keep it very, very simple. I just still stuck to the principle that um, it just needs to be comfortable. Uh, it just needs to give me. The, the simplest of data that I would have only ever used on any other boat previously, so my charts, where I am, my sonar, my fish finder, and then, you know, with this Simrag gear, um, we're also lucky that we can track fuel usage and things like that, so actually over the course of a season, I can see what um, fuel I'm using, and from a business point of view, I can then start to work numbers and figures, so that's important. Um, but then other stuff, you know, our VHF, that's standard on the boat, um, we've also got got an um, autopilot system as well so if we go on any uh, longer trips we'll we'll use that um, that just saves me having to steer away for you know, a couple of hours I can sit back um, and uh, let the boat do do its business um, but that's it it doesn't have to be any more complicated now in terms of sort of looking out of the boat we've got three windows in front of me um, we've got a triple wiper system it, again just to make sure that uh, I can see where I'm going it's just going to help with mooring it, it's just meant to work. Everything is meant to be easy for me to operate the boat and go out and catch fish. Yeah, just talking about uh, fuel economy, obviously we've got two whacking great engines on the back and I'm sure some people want to know just how much petrol disappears down their throats. Um, remember I said we've got hydrofoils on the boat. Um, one of the great things about that is an improvement in fuel economy. Now here's some figures for you. We operate at a cruising speed of about 27 to 30 knots. And what I'll do is I'll give the engine a bit of a boot to get up there and we'll be burning 170 litres an hour. However, as soon as we're there, we've got those hydrofoils, I can back the throttle off and keep backing it off and keep backing it off. It all gets a bit quiet and I can drop down to 100 litres an hour, which is a massive difference. And I'm still doing 27, 28, 29, 30 knots in the right conditions. Um, 100 litres an hour might sound pretty eye-watering. Um, I'm not sure I would have gone and put these on the back of my 21-foot boat, but for us as a commercial boat, it's, it's absolutely fine. And uh, yeah, I love having these engines on the back of the boat. And also in terms of the fuel, uh, on this boat we've got two fuel tanks, uh, just over 500 litres each, so we carry just over 1,000 litres of fuel. So our range is, is huge if we want it. Um, and that's great, we can operate most of the week and then do a fill up towards the end of the week. It makes life pretty straightforward. Um, so out on the deck, uh, what I create is a fully adaptive deck. We've got uh, seating out there, we've got our bait table with cool box underneath. But what I did is instead of it being either molded or, or fixed down in some way, it's just dropped into deck sockets. Uh, I made sure that the distance between the legs on the uh, on the on the seat was exactly the same distance as the legs on the uh, bait table that we created. And what that means is, if we had, for example, a day where we went off shark fishing, we can actually take the seat out. We get that off the deck, leave that on the pontoon. I can move the bait table back towards the cabin so we've still got that with us to use but it leaves me with a much more open space a freer space uh, to be going out and doing a, a different style of fishing yeah so just talking about our anchoring system uh, we use a windlass so just at the flick of a switch up and down um, as I said in the Bristol Channel we've got really fast tides we use pretty heavy anchors 25 kilo anchors now that is about the maximum size for the bow roller that I've got now when I started um, using this boat the first couple of weeks I did notice I had a little bit of a problem if the anchor came up the wrong way round it just didn't quite seem like there was enough space on the bow roller to, to allow it to flip around so occasionally I was popping out turning it around by hand and then uh, away we go what I then found was um, what's called an anchor turner. Um, or as I Googled and found out in Australia, I think they just call it boomeranging. You'll start to get the idea of the shape of it. It is pretty much boomerang shaped. 
and all that happens is, as the anchor comes up, it hits that, and whatever way round it is, flips the anchor around, straight into the bow roller. It's a fantastic little gizmo that I've attached. Well, that really does look a pretty tasty looking fishing boat. And better still, guys, I got to go fishing on it the following day. Yes, it was indeed very, very rough, but it's a big, stable fishing platform. Wait and see another film and check out what we call. We'll see you again on the TA Fishing Show. Don't forget to watch Mike's TA Outdoors. What are we going to put up next? With our show, you never really know. Come to that, neither do I. <laughs>